Yeah, we'll, we'll start getting lined up in the uh, in line. We'll start in uh, the folks here in Bloomington first. So, Coach, why don't you go ahead and start with an opening statement, and then we'll open up for questions. Um, really, it was a it was a tale of two halves. It was the first time in a while that I've been really really upset with my basketball team at halftime, and. Um, uh, giving up 41 points uh, was was not uh, conducive to going to win on the road. And um, again, give Indiana a lot of credit. They were well prepared, and and uh, they just they they really hurt us with some short rolls uh, out of their ball screen action. Um, we lo we lost um, Durham early, uh, and it, again, it was just. Uh, we were lethargic, and and they whipped us. I think 22 points and 10 rebounds from from uh, Trace Jackson Davis and Race Thompson in the first half uh, really challenged our guys at halftime. I have not done that in a long time, or had to do that, but uh, we responded. Uh, Georgie Bashanish Billy uh, plus 23, and the uh, and the plus minus was was a huge impact. Uh, you saw we played a little bigger tonight. I couldn't be happier with our two seniors. Uh, Trent Frazier and DeMonte Williams, uh, you know, Io had a tough night and again, give them credit. Uh, but uh, Trent stepped up, did what he did, banged a couple threes, DeMonte's defense rebounding, and then obviously ste stepping up and uh, uh, making two free throws was was huge. But the uh, uh, guy you just talked to, Curbelo, really controlled the second half, I thought, um, from the offensive standpoint, got the ball in the paint, broke them down. Uh, and then obviously a great feed to Kofi um, down the stretch. So um, really good college basketball game. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys opening the, the, uh, the overtime with back-to-back -back charges. Uh, and that's what you have to do to win on the road is show that grit and toughness. And uh, Jake and, uh, and, and Ace did, did a, a great job doing that. So um, happy to get out of here. First time since 2010, Illinois won in here. And, uh, Tough place to play and against a very good basketball team. Okay, thanks, Coach. We'll start with some of the folks who are there. Robert, Gavin, Derek, and Scott, and then Brandon. So we'll do in that order. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Coach, two baskets for Indiana from the 6.30 mark of the second half until uh, through overtime, really. 11 and a half minutes they scored He's with 30 seconds left in regulation oh, and scored with seven seconds left. Uh, tell me about your defense in those 11 minutes. Well, we made a nice adjustment uh, at uh, at halftime. We were a little bit deep in our ball screens. Uh, we moved Kofi up a little bit to, to try to take the short roll away. And to be quite honest, we just played harder. Um, but um, again, I thought we were we were effective, um, in, in, much more effective in the second half, just because of our effort and our and our our commitment uh, to to trying to guard and. Um, you know, again, they, they, they whooped us the first half. But uh, anytime you do that on the road, you give yourself a chance. I thought we had great looks tonight offensively and the ball didn't go in. It's what I always preach. You got to find a way to win when the ball doesn't go in. And uh, uh, Indiana is a great defensive team, not a good one, a great one. And uh, uh, we won one tonight with our defense. And tell me what a win like this, you know, on the road against a rival in overtime, what it can kind of do to boost the season. We'll find out, I guess. You know, I mean, it, it, it's obviously something that um, uh, we take a lot of pride in. We talk a lot about winning on the road. We talk about toughness. We talk about grit. That's why I was upset at half. Uh, we didn't have that. We were way too much talk and not enough, uh, uh, not enough pop, I guess. But um, again, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to slight Indiana because they were they were they were ready to play tonight and took it to us in the first half. Thanks. Okay, Gavin, you're up. Derek on deck. Go ahead, Gavin. Brad, it seemed like Kofi uh, was able to force Trace Jackson Davis into a lot of tough positions. I know he, he scored 19, but it took him 18 shots to get there. How do you evaluate Kofi's performance in the defensive end? Well, again, it was a tale of two halves. Uh, the first half, Kofi wasn't very active. He wasn't very good. Uh, I, just indicative of, of his end of half, just not even putting a hand up and letting Trace make a shot at the buzzer. Um, I challenged Kofi at halftime, and uh, uh, he's got to be better than that. And, and he was so elite in practice on the defensive side yesterday. Um, I, I was 
it was, I was in awe. I've never seen a guy be that dominant defensively. And so I was shocked today when he came out uh, like that. But second half, he walled up. He made it hard. Uh, anytime you're, uh, you're holding a guy like Trace to, to 19 on 18 shots, you've done, you've done a heck of a job. Absolutely. And then I, I think Trent scored 11 straight points um, for you guys down the stretch uh, going into OT. How clutch was his play today, especially with Io fouled out? Yeah, thank goodness. I mean, it's nice to have a great option. And, and he, was, he was it. We kept running actions to him. Uh, we tried to put him in space where we knew they would tag off of him. Uh, he hits a couple shots. And again, you know, a guy who's been in a lot of wars, he's been in this building before. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, tr we're almost shocked when Trent misses one now because he's been on such a, such a burner. Thanks. Okay, uh, Derek Piper, you're up. Scott Ritchie on deck. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, I know you talked about finding different ways to win games and how they can maybe prepare you uh, down the road. Uh, to be able to close it out without your closer in I.O., what do you think that said about the team? Uh, a lot, a lot. I, you know what? And at the end of the day, um, this, this game could resonate a lot because, because we didn't have it. And uh, we played with a good portion of, of the second half without it. And, uh, you know, I.O. had a tough night, and Indiana deserves a lot of that credit. Uh, it, it, but, again, it was, you know, Curbelo, I thought, controlled the second half. Uh, Trent shots. Then we got Kofi the ball. We, um, you know, we got great looks for Ace. We got, uh, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of easy opportunities with, with Georgie and post-ups. We just had a little better, a little better flow. So it was, it was that, and, and to guys to step up and make free throws, I'm still – upset Bello missed a couple free throws because he usually doesn't miss those. He's usually very clutch. But um, yeah, all, all in all, it's, it's nice to win when, you're, uh, when your All-American doesn't, uh, doesn't have, have it that night. I know after Ohio State, you had some tough heart-to-heart -heart conversations with the guys to be able to bounce back to, to beat Iowa, to win this kind of game. Uh, what do you think that says about the response? What have you seen out of the guys since then? Yeah, they care. They care. They, they, this, this team had to maybe reset and, and refocus on some of their goals. And, and uh, um, you know, we, we hit a lull. We hit a flat spot, which is everybody does in this league. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, we bounced back a little bit. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Thanks. Hey, Scott Ritchie and then Brandon. Go ahead, Scott. So Brad, when, when you mentioned maybe Bello taking over that second half, just what difference did he make? offensively and maybe just going out there and making something happen after I mean, things looked a little stagnant offensively you know, when, when he was on the bench with two fouls in the first half. Well, you know, Stephen Gentry does a lot with our offense and, and, and Gent just, we just started putting him in ball screens in middle ball screens where we opened the court up and, and Gent just kept calling that number. And, and it was, again, it was a, it was a, it was an open, open court and he's very hard to handle in the open court. And he found the paint he sprayed it. Uh, he got there a couple times. He missed a couple layups. He usually makes, but uh, again, the court just uh, opens up, and that that opens players up. And it got Trent a couple looks, and and uh, and obviously the pass at the end of the game was uh, a pass not many guys make. And I mean, this feels like it happened forever ago. But what type of explanation did you get for that technical on Trent? And then, maybe any thoughts you had on 54 total fouls? tonight no I won't con I mean I, Trent hollered cash after he hit it and said he taunted so I you know they 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 teed him and um, you know again you have to adjust every single night to how the game's being officiated and and uh, uh, we've got to do a better job of that and uh, but it was you know it, it kept them in it um, you know holding them to two field goals in the last whatever it was. 14 minutes or whatever, 11 minutes. Um, you know, it was just a parade to the free throw line. We got to be better at, at, at not fouling in those situations and to understand how the game's being called. Thanks, Brad. Okay, we'll go Brandon, then Rob, and then uh, Joey. Go ahead, Brandon. Brad, talk to me about DeMonte. I mean, he doesn't play much in the Iowa game, and he didn't have a ton of action tonight, but then at the end of the game, he comes in overtime and makes some huge plays. So how proud, of you, how proud, are, you, how proud are you of him? Again, first time in a long time, DeMonte's really healthy and uh, uh, does what a senior does. He had a great week of practice. It showed. It paid off. 
Um, you know, it was a, it was a, again, a unique time because DeMonte played a lot more at the, at, at the guard spot tonight than he usually does guard and power forwards, uh, because of Georgie's minutes, but it worked out great because, uh, you know, we had so much foul problems, uh, that gives us the luxury that we could play Jacob there. We could play DeMonte there. And, and, uh, I thought ACE was Adam Miller was unbelievable defensively after the first two minutes of the game. Uh, so I felt comfortable with him in there as well, but, uh, I'm really proud of DeMonte and, and, uh, you know, last time he went to that line of the game on the line against Maryland, he missed him. And, and to step back up on the road and make him, um, I'm really proud of him. You went up to him and had a moment with him at the end. Do you kind of remember what you said to him after the game? Yeah, but I won't tell you that. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Rob, go ahead and then Joey. Brad, I hope this question doesn't seem silly. We're all going to be writing about officiating, and uh, I wonder don't, if this – Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That was a great win. Take that. Take. Don't do that. There was a lot of fouls called both ways. I hear it, was a, it was a hell of a college basketball game with two good teams. Particularly, I want to know is is that the first time you've seen Lewis Garrison since the incident? That's a great question. I have to go back and look. I don't. I don't. I don't know that. So, did you have any conversation with him about it? No. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks. Joey, you're up, and then uh, Matt Stevens. Go ahead, Joey. Brad, it looked like Andre defensively was really, really engaged, had his hands in a lot of things, and he's piecing together both sides of the floor like that. What, what does that do for you guys? Well, you guys should see a scattering report. Um, you know, he, he, he's a, he's a note-taking guy, um, you know, when it comes to scouting reports and no one, and he's, he's dialed into other teams' play calls. He's very vocal on the defensive side. That helps him a lot, but uh, – uh, you know, if I could just get him to quit doing the silly fouls, you know, trying to back tap and do all that so he could stay in the game, uh, the first half might have been a little different. But, uh, uh, but yeah, he's, he's a great anticipator. He sees things. He understands. Uh, he's, he's got a – you know, I say this a little bit. He's a savant in terms of his ability to remember and retain. He sees a play once. He knows what's coming. And so he's able to, to, to echo that that call or that play to his teammates. And, and that that's, um, he's had to adjust to guarding the ball better, but he's done a nice job of that as well. And then tonight, obviously without IO, it was necessitated a little bit for him to have the ball so much and the, you know, the closing stretch of a big game here, but how much has your trust grown in him from day one to where it's at now? Well, I've always knew he was a talented player. And, and, and again, when you've got a guy like IO and you've got a senior in Trent, you know, you've got to, You've got to you've got to earn your stripes, and um, and obviously, uh, without Io in the game tonight, Io we everybody knows is the elite closer in college basketball, and, and tonight uh, it had to be him, and and we were putting Trent in positions, uh, what we call shake positions, to where they couldn't tag, they couldn't help, and um, so it was it was a it was a great night, it was a great learning moment for him, and one that uh, I'll continue to gain a lot of confidence in. Thanks, Brad. Okay, Matt Stevens, and then uh, if we've got time, we'll go Jeremy and Alec. Go, go ahead, Matt. Brad, I couldn't help but notice during the entire overtime, Armand Franklin either didn't touch it or barely touched it. Two things. One, I guess I'm giving you another opportunity to campaign for Trent. Um, but two, there, there's four other guys on the floor that understood the scattering report from that during that five-minute overtime, too. Can you kind of talk about what goes into that and just how, how, how this, this team has evolved in that regard of understanding how to get things done on that end of the floor in terms yeah. of the scouting report? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, you know, I, and I always refer back to the Baylor game when, when we had one player make 10 mistakes, you know, in, in terms of ball screen coverage. I bet there's not 10 out there tonight. There were some early. But, um, yeah, and I mean, when it's winning time, you can't make mistakes. And you have to force opponents into something they don't want to do when they're trying to run their very best play or their very best action. And and, uh, you know, Franklin's been their guy. He's a terrific player. He's going to be a pain in the butt for the next couple of years to face. And, um, but Trent did a, did a great job. Kofi, Georgie did an elite job. DeMonte, uh, in our ball screen coverages, we switched some with DeMonte. And uh, that gives you the luxury with DeMonte to do a lot of, a lot of switching, which was uh, uh, really a positive in the end. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate it. Okay, Jeremy uh, Warner and then Alec will finish it up maybe. Go ahead, Jeremy. 
Hey, Brad, 1.28 points per possession. I think Indiana was first half, and then you finish under one, or you held them to under one after I think it was 0.4 in the overtime. What's the key to your team walking in defensively, whether it's mindset or scouting report things? Well, I hope it's – a majority of it is energy. And a, and, a, and a focus in it. And again, you know, it's a really fine line between being that false sense of emotion that's not real, where you're really not dialed in. And, and, and again, we had three mistakes in the first three possessions that allowed buckets, and you can't do that. And, and uh, uh, again, I, I, I challenged this group at halftime. I was not very happy. And, and uh, this group is now mature, can respond, and, and, and stayed focused and dialed in. And like I said, we made some subtle changes that worked. So um, kudos to our guys for, for, for picking that up. And that, we've just got to make sure we don't do that again because a lot of times you're not going to come away with a road win when, you, when you're not focused. Can this team be better defensively than last year? And if so, why? Yes. More, way more versatility. Um, that's why I keep driving it. That's why I keep harping on it. That's why we spend two thirds of our practice on it. Um, for us to get where we need to go, we have to be like we were in the second half. And uh, this team can be elite because of Demonte Williams, because of Jacob Grandison, because of Georgie, the way he played tonight. Um, Curbelo, Adam Miller has turned into an elite on-ball defender. I mean, we've got him on fantasy uh, in the second half. and and. Uh, you know, you throw Trent and Io out there, and all of a sudden, you know, you got some guys who are very capable of guarding. So it's just it's just putting that chemistry together, Jeremy. Thanks, Brad. Okay, and we'll wrap it up with Alec. Uh, go ahead, Alec. This will be the last one. Brad, you've been really high praise to Georgie tonight. I know he fouled out, and his energy to me in the second half seemed to be really good. Can you comment on that a little bit? He seemed to just be able to be on a different level emotionally and energy-wise in the second half after he hit that three in the corner? Yeah, I mean, he's so he, – he's, he's such a big part of our team from that standpoint, not just physically, emotionally. I mean, he missed a, he missed a little bunny. I mean, we, we want to run offense to Georgie. And Georgie's been in with, with Orlando every day this week, uh, at the end of last week, and he's been getting up four or five hundred threes every single day. So it's nice to see him rewarded by making a three. You, and And – that's an option that I want to be able to have is, is Georgie playing with Kofi and uh, not just as his, his, his support off the bench. And uh, it's a nice luxury to have. And Georgie was terrific tonight. I, I love when Georgie's like that. And then a quick follow-up if there's time. Jacob Grandison didn't see as many minutes in the second half. I know you said that he's been kind of battling some injuries. Is that kind of what went into his limited minutes in the second half? Or what kind of went into your decision to keep him on the bench a little bit more? It wasn't that. It was just more of the coincidence of the game. I, you know, and I, I was, um, I didn't think he, I think he had a tough time with, with, with race tonight. Uh, DeMonte's strength, you know, DeMonte's extremely strong. Georgie uh, was more about playing bigger. We actually played Jacob a lot more kind of on a perimeter spot defensively tonight than we did at the four. So uh, just kind of the way the game went, Alec, and, and, and uh, he'll be, uh, he'll be back and ready to go uh, on Saturday. Thanks a lot, Brad. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Congrats on the win. Have a safe trip home. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Brad. You have to sit here and listen to all that. <laughs>